Well, ladies and gentlemen, we we are close to the end now. I am proud to say that we have finally reached the first part of the season finale, which means we have one more episode after this, but I am so ready for this, because once the season's over, we can finally get through this thing, and then I'll be only three seasons behind, but that means I have a lot of catching up to do, you know, since I do pretty bad promises on scheduling when it comes to these reviews, and I don't know if I will actually do what I did with the Season 4 finale when I start to review Season 6, where I just basically watch, review the episodes from my Xbox. But, we don't have to worry about that, because first things first, we're going into the Cutie Remark Part 1. So this episode starts out with Twilight basically giving a speech, which is basically the equivalent of practicing a speech, which is the equivalent of an exhibition dump. Um, um, even after the commercial break, they pretty much... Uh, she pretty much gives the explanation of pretty much how, how you know, uh, whatchamacallit, oh yeah, Cutie Mark Chronicles happened, and that was not the, what could have possibly happened? I basically fast forward through it to save you the trouble, because really what it boils down to is that it's really just an exposition of what's going to happen for this episode. Oh yeah, and and Twilight also potentially saw Starlight's comeback. Right. So they head inside the castle where... Maybe I was just more about that speech than I thought. Yeah, that sounds better than Starlight Warren coming back with an evil plot for revenge. Spike? Oh, you say it like that, it sounds kind of silly. Speaking of that... Actually true. Welcome home, Twilight. You know, I... I could possibly take this seriously, but the scenario of Starlight just waiting in Twilight's home is way too similar -er to what happened in DC's Countdown, where Darkseid just appears at Mary Marvel's couch. And that thing I'm expecting is Starlight to say, Come sit here, Twilight. American Idol is going to be on. Or, request, request she has idols. I mean, it's just so ridiculous. I mean, I gotta give Starlight prop pups for basically be waiting there, but how long do you think she's been sitting there waiting for for Twilight to come home? Um, I'm really supposed to take this seriously, but now that I've watched Link Carter and know about how counts down and the whole dark side sitting on Mary Marvel's couch, I can't help but think about that. So I can't help but crack a smile when I think about this. Mm. And before they can even react, she basically he summons who basically crumples a piece of paper and summons a portal, which is the equivalent of time travel. And apparently touching a piece of paper activates... <laughs> and spoilers, we don't see the rest of the main... Space. So, let's see, this is, what, the second or third finale where Twilight has to do everything by herself. I mean, I, I mean, I understand that it's supposed to help, help evolve Twilight's character and show development for her, but let's see, pretty much every, with the exception of the best night ever, pretty much every season finale so far, or it's pretty much Twilight trying to resolve the problem. And and so basically they travel to the past back to Cloudsdale where Rainbow Dash had her big race to protect Fluttershy's honor. But then she discovers that they actually brought back the music from Tree Mark Chronicles. I really like that. But, and of course, it all ends up happening when Starlight up and stops the rainbow from happening, and pretty much everything goes to, well, crap. And Twilight is basically sent back to the present, or an alternate timeline where Equestria go, 
where it's pretty much the end of the world. So, and this is basically one of the key points of the episode that many people have pointed out. Basically, various futures of what happened if the rain, if the sonic rain boom never happened. I got to admit that basically this first, this first alternate in timeline is a basically a good start as. Well, as Twilight discovers that Ponyville is kind of in shambles. Ready? Ready? Did you hear Spike? I'm not sure anything we know is the same. But I know one place that can never change. And turn into a sweatshop. So. Yeah, basically, there's a lot of manufacturing stuff, as... I like how Applejack just mentions a fandom... fandom... fandom name. Name. Like, ah, ah, she did it! She said it! Yep. So basically, in this alternate timeline, we basically see that Sombra has taken over the world. Does that mean we can actually see him do some cool things? Where have you two been? Why not? She could be right next to that Goku child oh, from another planet. I'm telling you the truth. So basically, Applejack starts to explain how Sombra took over the Crystal Empire. And to do this, he brought the most evil material or any the war or King Mongrel can find. The armor that's from ancient Egypt. But yeah, this dystopian future is pretty screwed up, considering that Sombra forces ponies to fight. And we basically also see that he, that, that Rainbow Dash leads the charge, and it's surprisingly brutal, but also action-packed at the same time. Also, in this universe, we also see e Rainbow Dash loses her right wing, and we also see that Pinkie Pie and, and Mod Pie have super strength. Oh my god, this sounds like a... I know it's all war and everything, but this future sounds awesome! Yeah, there's an evil dick here that wants to take over the course of uh, but by god, it sounds awesome! I spell that Starlight also got the time travel spell, and it was also from Star Scroll the Bearded. Is there any spell that Star Scroll has come up with that a pony attempts to use that doesn't cause total annihilation? I mean, it almost seems like every other finale. Finale. Well, let's see. Then again, 
last time I checked, it's only been like two two seasons finale, but still. Oh, why is it exactly that Modern Ponies wants to use spells that all the ponies have tried to use and completely failed, yet succeed in doing it, and yet somehow pretty much causes almost the end of the world? Oh. So she uses the spell to try to stop her, but the Starlight beats her to the punch. Punch. Well, maybe if you just simply didn't stand around like you did... Well, maybe if you guys just didn't stand out in the open like that, maybe you would get a head start on her. Well, finding her will be easy, but stopping her is going to be harder than you think. Sorry to disappoint you, but I created that spell. And I think it's the best way to do it. So, wait, so you made the spell yourself and then and you borrowed from Star Swirl and yet you. I don't get it. So, wait, wait, I'm confused, so if you cast it, wait, okay, let me, let me try to process this really quickly. So basically, start, when Twilight uses a spell, Starlight basically comes back to this specific spot. I mean, I understand it's basically time, but, it, I, this is kind of going over my head, really. I was going to point that out if you were trying to sabotage yourself, health, but I guess you really did it on purpose, and you're always one step ahead of her, so I will give you kudos for that. What exactly is that? You were pretty much the, using the equivalent of a concentration camp. What the hell made that so special? Yeah, and I'm sure or Twilight could just explain to her about her corruption of the space-time continuum. Um, which, yeah, this is going to be a time travel story that is not going to get old anytime soon. And that was pretty much the end of part one, and... It was okay. Oh, never mind then. If we still got ways to go. Okay, so Twilight managed to free herself, but that kind of begs the question, why didn't she just do that at earlier? She's going to save us a lot of time on that. Again, why couldn't she just free herself out of the crystal earlier? But we actually do see that uh, Starlight actually stops the bullying. I mean, you were? Of course. In a world where anyone can be Yeah, exactly.
Because I'm going to keep using these Persona clips because it pretty much, once again, much like with the season premiere, constantly you feel like they contradict Starlight's logic in this. I shall guide them. Well, even though this does potentially stop up in our timeline, I will say this, at least Starlight could actually stop up these one-dimensional bullies, at least. He's, which, by the way, we have not seen in a long time, so I guess that's good, at least. Uh, in what manner? Yeah, about that. How selfish. We're unable to win by honest means. So we use foul tricks to ascend the political ladder. Stop the race boom is just a bonus. Yeah, maybe Spike, maybe you shouldn't have pointed that out. Although Yeah, so Twilight tries to convince Rainbow Dash to basically perform the Rainbow, but it pretty much goes without fail. The impossible is possible. Yeah, Twilight is the best. So now we go to another timeline where we end up in the forest, apparently. Oh no, they pissed off the natives. Okay, now part one finally ends. So, as I was trying to say before I realized, oh wait, we're not done with the episode, this part was alright. I mean, so far from what I've seen, the beginning's just kind of a bit of an expedition dump. It's, while I will give Starlight credit for actually being sort of smarter and anticipating Twilight's moves, basically the equivalent of her coming back and potentially, you know, being the villain from the season premiere was kind of expected, and at the same time, her plot of not realizing, oh yeah, enslaving an entire village of ponies to wait her own challenge was really, really, really stupid. And it's still kind of hard to fault her on that when considering that it's not necessarily a good thing either. Either. And... And then starting with this part one of these alternate timelines, I will give it a lot of this. It does actually give some nice creative alternatives of what would happen if some of the other villains, like, basically took over, over Equestria, so I can pretty much give that. Though, oh, going into the second part, it kind of makes you wonder or, or how the space-time continuum is going to be able to recover from this aneurysm. I mean, honestly, the, so far with this finale, the time travel concept is... Interesting, I will say that, but again, Starlight's logic is just kind of, it's just kind of hard to relate to, really, considering that uh, the same stuff are just kind of really, you know, bad things that nobody, sh nobody that cruel should do. I don't know. I guess there's just a lot of things that I may have to look into the second part, but that's going to have so, as a whole, I guess they'd say that the Cutie Remark Part 1 is at least an interesting start. So, I guess maybe as a whole, I mean, it's good, but there's just some elements that just continue to baffle me. But, I think as a whole, the Cutie Remark Part 1 will probably get, I, I think I'll probably give it a B. 
it's good, but there are just some things that are holding it back. And with that, we prep. Well, that being said, Ed, we, we have one more episode of Season 5, and then I will finally be done. Next time, we are going to take a look at the Cutie Remark Part 2, and we can finally put Season 5 to rest. See ya.